F1 cars run on pretty much the same fuel you and I get at the pumps. But petrol is petrol and it's highly flammable. That's the point of this stuff. In races, F1 cars must now carry all their fuel from the start. 200 litres of petrol travelling at 200 miles an hour. That is quite a missile. The tank has to be tough or the driver could be toast. Strength usually has a weight penalty, but in the anorexic world of F1, that isn't an option. And thanks to a bulletproof vest, the cars stay safe, light and fast. For their solution, the F1 designers took a bit of a swerve. Rather than build strong, rigid fuel tanks to withstand impacts, they use something that works on principles closer to the way a car suspension works. A bit of give. Down here I have a water bottle and a rubber gimbal, both with water in them. I'm going to drop them both off here, same height, 15 metres, and then, well, we'll see the principle in action. The bottle first, I think. So it's just up and over the edge, really. Here we go. Oh, dear. That didn't work. That would be bad in a fuel tank. And now the ball. Right. That's more like it. Now, while our 15-meter drop may not have created F1-type speeds, it does a fairly good job of replicating the type of forces a fuel tank might experience during an impact. A lightweight, flexible material that bends and absorbs impact sounds ideal. Apparently, it's tricky to make something flexible and strong. Professor Paul Hogg is a materials expert from Manchester University. Paul, all I've really demonstrated there then is, well, the solution. Why don't they just make Formula One tanks out of rubber? OK, so it's, it's, it's nice, it's conformable, it'll, it'll put up with that sort of drop loading. Yeah. But what happens if you've got something sharp that's going to puncture it? This material is actually quite weak. Most of the things that make materials flexible tend to make them weak at the same time. So if you've got something sharp that's going to puncture that, you've got a problem. OK, so if it's a sharp, pointy impact, mm. something like, let's say, an arrow. an arrow. Glad you said that. Good, because over here, Master Archer Steve Ralphs is going to fire a flaming arrow into this, which is going to be, for the purposes of this demonstration, our fuel tank. It's another rubber ball full of fuel. I should put it on the target, like so. Steve? And because our rubber ball has several litres of petrol in it, and we're about to shoot it with a flaming arrow, we thought it best if we had the local fire brigade sort of on standby. They have a lot of flaming arrow-related fires in Lancashire, apparently. Steve, you reckon you can put a flaming arrow in there from about here? We can, but try. OK. If you watch Formula One, you'll know this is exactly the kind of thing that can happen in a racing situation. We are flaming. Yeah. And that is why they banned crossbows at racetracks. Whilst flaming arrows aren't usually an issue during a race, the 230-litre fuel tank in an F1 car sits in between a white-hot engine and a vulnerable driver. Any spillage, and you can have a fireball. Possibly overkill there. That didn't work at all, did it? Didn't, no. Clearly the rubber's just not... It's flexible. Flexible, but it's just not strong enough, particularly when you've got that point loading on. Which could well happen in an accident at a race. Not an arrow, obviously, but a piece of metal could go in. So how are we going to make something that is flexible enough and strong enough? Well, we've got a bit of a problem there. I mean, we know that things that make materials flexible tend to make them weak, and that's the other way around. If you want to make something very strong, it becomes very rigid. But we've got a trick we can use in materials, and we use this a lot, and that's by making things very thin. And if we make a very strong material into a fibre, it's very thin, 
and it becomes very flexible. This is, this is Kevlar. It's a very strong material. It's actually a very stiff material, but in a fibre form, you can see it's very, very flexible like that. Kevlar is so resistant to puncture, it's become synonymous with bulletproof vests and armour. It was originally invented in 1965 by chemist Stephanie Qualick as a lightweight replacement for the steel bands in tyres. Right, so this is very strong stuff made very thin, yeah. which means it's flexible. That's brilliant, Paul. That's, only that's problem all it is. takes. That material is about five to ten times as strong as steel. Yep, just like carbon cloth, this miracle fibre is stronger than steel, between five and ten times stronger. That's why they can afford to make it so thin. So by making something like Kevlar thin, you can make it flexible and strong, yes. but that won't it's hold much use, fuel, obviously, it'll well, fall out. The first thing we've got to do, we've got to turn that into some sort of fabric so that we can use the material to make a shape, but a fabric isn't going to hold the fuel in, is it? So we've got to encase that in something, which is still flexible. So we take that and we combine it with the rubber the rubber encases it, and we get... And this this like is this. the real deal. This is an actual F1 yes. tank. They've lent us this. It doesn't look much, but it's very, very clever. And also, very expensive thousands of pounds to make one of these. And that's combining, then, the properties of these two materials. So yeah. this, then, is stiff and strong, and it'll hold the fuel without it sure. running out. Yeah. So basically, it's a, rub it's a rubber matrix reinforced with the Kevlar to give it the strength that you need. Really, we should test this I think with another flaming arrow. Yeah. I don't, can't really... No? They're, no, they'll they're be shouting. Okay. Very, very expensive. We've been lent. We've got to give it back. However, I've devised something over here that might just do the job. I have brought along the industrial cousin of the material used in the F1 tank, rubberized Kevlar. This is the stuff, so this is the Kevlar fibre inside. Course, yeah. It's making it strong. And this is the rubber in it, and yeah, it's still nice flexible, flexible. Mm -hmm. but very, very strong, combining the properties of the two materials. Steve, have we got any more flaming arrows? I think we need another one. Though it visibly deforms the rubber, the arrow can't pierce the Kevlar, the bag is never punctured, the fuel never leaks, and the driver is safe. It worked! OK, it was an unusual setup, but the principles are exactly the same. Those two materials working together can be flexible and strong. Most importantly, my fuel is safe in that rubber ball, because it's quite expensive. The flexibility of the tank has an added benefit. It can be squashed to fit a tight space. And I get to enjoy the spectacle of two highly trained engineers using talcum powder to help post the crushed tank through the slot in the frame. The integrity of a stiff, strong frame would be ruined if you had to cut a big hole in it for your fuel tank. If you need a hand at any time, just ask me. I'm here for the more technical bits, obviously. So there you have it, F1's dirty little secret, talcum powder. Easy. <laughs>